AT&T is the largest telecommunications business by revenue and is now one of the most controversial stocks in the dividend investing community. And one of the most common questions that I get asked are my thoughts on AT&T and if I'm going to sell out of the stock. In my opinion, you should always know about a business before you invest your money into it. So today I'm going to be going over all the information I think is critical to know before you invest in AT&T. So today we're going to be going over a qualitative and quantitative analysis of AT&T, its new dividend, my thoughts on the stock, and many more. We're also going to be going over the new Warner Brothers Discovery spin-off company and analyzing that as well. AT&T helps a lot of people do very important things using technology. For example, smashing the like button on this video. And telecommunications and this whole industry could be a really big player in 5G and in the next modern century to come, which is why I'm so in T to invest. And guys, if anything else happens with AT&T stock, make sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications. I'm trying to get 150 subscribers by the end of the year, so your support would mean a lot to me. With all that out of the way, smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe. Join the Discord if you want to debate me on AT&T, and of course, roll the intro. Hello, I like money. Bell Telephone Company was founded in 1885 by Alexander Graham Bell. They were eventually known as the American Telephone and Telegraph Company, and eventually that got rebranded into AT&T. AT&T eventually got so big and monopoly concerns rose, and in 1982 they were broken up. And that's a simplified version of where it leads us today. But it's honestly crazy to know that AT&T has existed since 1885. On AT&T's website, they said their purpose is to create connection. Over the last year, AT&T stock has been down 20.93%. This is mainly because AT&T announced that they'd be spinning off their Warner Media assets, and along with that, they'd have to cut their dividend. This is obvious, though, because AT&T's payout ratio would be dangerously high, in my opinion, if they were to continue paying the dividend that they had been paying with the Warner Media assets they possessed. Their forward P.E. ratio is 7.43% at the recording of this video. For me personally, a fair P.E. ratio is between 20 and 25, and this is only more verification that AT&T is currently undervalued. Their market cap is $168 billion, and their earnings per share is 3.13. On this quote on AT&T's website, John Stanky, the CEO of AT&T, says that we're committed to transforming our business while investing in key growth areas to achieve sustained success and returning value to shareholders through dividends. Now Warren Buffett always talks about how there should be an honest lord in charge of the company, aka a good CEO. So let's do a little dive about John Stanky and his history with AT&T. Stanky was hired by AT&T of July of 2020 and was the former CEO of Warner Media and for previously served as AT&T's president and COO. Admittedly, AT&T has had some pretty rocky management, but hopefully Stanky can provide some consistency and stability in AT&T's management. As I said, he previously served as the president and chief operating officer. Since Stanky took over in July of 2020, during a pandemic, mind you, the stock has been down over 20%. I usually don't pay attention to this since this is in the short term, and I'd much rather provide a long-term outlook, maybe in like five years of how he's performed. His main goals are providing shareholder value, which I am definitely in for. At this time, I honestly don't have much thoughts on Stanky as a CEO, but ask me in five years and I'll definitely have a more clear answer. I am happy, though, that he is committed to paying out a sustainable dividend and investing profits back into the business for growth. Now let's go over AT&T's business segments. In order from smallest to biggest, AT&T's business segments are Latin America, Warner Media, and their telecommunications business. As I mentioned earlier, they spinned off their Warner Media business, so let's try not to pay too much attention to that at the moment. This chart is based off of AT&T's quarter 4 2021 results. Their communications business makes up 80% of their operating income. Their Warner Media segment makes up 20% of their operating income, and then their communications business makes up 73% of the revenue, Warner Media makes up 24% of the revenue, and their Latin America business makes up 3% of the revenue. Now, their Latin America communications business is small, but hopefully can grow to the giant that the communications business is today, and the cash generating machine it is. 
Again, guys, as I said, if you're investing for in, in AT&T in the long term, you are investing in their communications business. Their market focus in the communications business is to provide high-speed fiber and wireless broadband networks and to connect the people and businesses that form the foundation of how we live our daily lives. AT&T's communications business has been a cash-generating machine and year, grew year-over-year 1.4% to $6.5 billion in quarter four. This should be music to investors' ears, as especially for long-term dividend investors, as what we want is slow, large, and consistent growth. Now, according to CNN, AT&T's top five shareholders are the Vanguard Group, which is good to see, BlackRock Fund Advisors, SSGA Funds Management Incorporated, Newport Trust Company, and Geode Capital Management. Now, usually when you see Vanguard Group at the top of this, it's a good sign since they focus on investing in high-quality companies. Now, let's talk about the topic of the day, AT&T's dividend. Now, I would argue for the industry that AT&T is in that they actually did have a pretty safe dividend. Their payout ratio was 61%, which I would definitely say was manageable. Their annual payout was $2.08, but they recently announced that their new dividend would be $1.11 per share. This is a 53% dividend cut, which is pretty big. The reason behind this cut was to invest more money into their 5G business. They also wouldn't have that Warner Media assets to help pay that dividend, making the payout ratio bigger, as I mentioned earlier. And overall, creating a more sustainable dividend for long-term investors. Now, a lot of older and retired people relied on this AT&T dividend income for income, obviously, to live off of. So I think that they it would be unfair to say that they didn't do the older or share, some shareholders dirty here. Now let's go over AT&T's profit margin. AT&T's profit margin is 52.74%. This is just a little over the sector median, so I'm not freaking out over this. Warner Media owned many different assets. Example, CNN. Fake news. Sir, go ahead. Can you stay? Warner Brothers brands like Scooby Doo, The Joker, etc. As mentioned earlier, AT&T will be spinning off their Warner Media assets into the new Warner Brothers Discovery Company, which will be publicly traded under stock ticker WBD. AT&T will own 71% of the new company, and Discovery will own the remainder of this. AT&T shareholders will be receiving 0.24 shares of this new company. The new spin-off company will have a market cap of 50 to 60 billion dollars. Personally, I don't know what I'll be doing with these shares, but I'm more leaning to selling them and then using that money to fund more high-quality positions for my long-term portfolio. Now here's a recent interview with CEO John Stakey on the outlook of the business. This was a couple weeks ago, so it's more updated. First time we've gotten a chance to kind of go through this. You decided to do a spin-off instead of a split after mulling it over. Um, what pushed you that direction? What, what made you decide that? Yeah, we, we did more than mull it. I mean, we studied it and examined it a long time and very carefully. And, you know, at the end of the day, I think one of the things that we concluded, we started this transaction because we wanted to drive shareholder value. And we felt that getting the equity structured in the way we did would have the best chance of making that happen. After we went through what would be required to go down the split side, well, it had really attractive aspects from my point of view, which would be cutting down the share count, which is something over time I'd obviously like to do. The cost of doing it would have taken money out of certain shareholders' pockets to execute it. And, um, you know, look, we have to accept that the markets are smart. I think our shareholders are smart and give them the choice to do what they want to do. And it's a, it's a very clean path to executing. It goes very quickly which will allow us to complete the transaction in a really rapid period of time, which is good. So I think by and large, our primary goal was to make sure we just let the market and the shareholder decide where they wanted the value. And look, coming out of this, they have a great opportunity. They're going to own two stocks. And I think both have great prospects. They're a little different in characteristic as to growth and what they do, but the shareholder can make that decision. And getting the upside of what I think is going to be an incredibly strong company, Warner Brothers Discovery, and what David's going to be able to do with that equity and watch it grow and get full fair market value for it will be a good thing for those shareholders who choose to stay in it. Uh, the, the market didn't give a great reaction to the news. It was a 5% drop in the shares um, on the day of the announcement. Mm -hmm. Is that because the dividend cut to, to 111 from 208? Was that bigger than people were anticipating? What do you think happened? I, I think there was a little bit of adjustment that went on once the dividend number settled in because, as you know, we, because we had not decided whether we were going to spin or split, we couldn't state a dividend number. We can only give a range in, mm -hmm. in total payout of what we're going to uh, dedicate to the dividend. 
So I think there was a little bit of an adjustment around that, although, my gosh, the yield is still a wonderful yield. You know, it's one of the best in, in corporate America right now. 8.9% yeah, this morning. So, um, you know, I think over time, as the fundamentals settle in, we'll see the stock adjust. And, uh, you know, if, if I step back and, and think about what's going to happen over the coming, there'll be a little volatility. There's going to be people picking sides and where they want to go. And so we expect there's going to be some days where we see, you know, a little bit of movement. And, but over time, intrinsic value tends to be recognized by the market. And I think there's a lot of intrinsic value. I mean, there were analysts that said they were glad that you went further with the dividend to give you more flexibility and, and uh, Pay down debt, have capex. Pay down debt, yeah. build out 5G, and they were glad that it was that part of the range. They may not be retirees, but 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 people that are interested in the long. And there's people that, you know, some people don't even like dividend paying stocks. So you're somewhere in there where you do have things to do with that money that maybe are better spent it's, with it. It's, it's exactly you know. the issue, Joe. I mean, we're sitting at this moment where um, I know Jeff was talking a little bit about what the future is right before I came on. and. You know, when you think about the dawn of connectivity that we're in that's going to enable many of the things that he's addressing and what the future is, uh, our company is the fabric that a lot of that innovation runs on. And uh, we believe this is an opportunity for us to invest at a level and drive some improved returns. And I'd, I'd much rather be pouring some of that cash back into the infrastructure of this business that returns at a higher level than what we pay out on the dividend. So it's time to make that transition for this company, and we've got a lot of great opportunities and great assets to actually drive better value. In my opinion, Stanky is very optimistic for the future and just wants to get the spinoff done with. Now, I want to end the video with a quote from Peter Lynch that I think relates perfectly to at and stock recently. Nothing wrong with this company selling for $75 million. I was a little premature at 16, but uh, I said everything's fine, and eventually this will work out. And they, what they did is they gave away all their shares to their shareholders. They, they passed out shares in Kaiser Cement, they passed out shares in Kaiser Lunum, they passed out their public shares in Kaiser Steel, they sold all the other businesses, and you get about $50 a share. And, but if you didn't understand the company, if you were just buying on the fact the stock had gone from 26 to 16, and then it got to 10, what would you do when it went to 9? What would you do when it went to 8? What would you do when it went to 7? This is the problem that people have, is they sell stocks because they didn't know why they bought it, then it went down, and they don't know what to do now. Currently, I own 18.725 shares of AT&T, and I'll look to buy more when I actually have money, but I think the stock is honestly just going to stay down until the spinoff happens, and then I think it will slowly and gradually move back up into the 30s and keep growing. I'm probably also going to sell those Warner Brother Discovery shares and invest it back into some other high-quality companies. In conclusion, I think AT&T has a really strong telecommunications business, that will be slow and can't print out money in the future. I want to thank you all so much for watching. It really means a lot to me. Again, guys, if you could, make sure to smash the like button, subscribe, turn on post notifications. Trust me, I'll make more videos if anything happens with AT&T stock in the future. I cover stock market news, all that stuff. Join the Discord link in bio. Debate me on topics and stuff there. I'll share my buys, my dividends received, all that good stuff. And lastly, guys, and most importantly, do dividend stocks, not drugs, and have a good one.